Hi, and welcome to Sanborn's GeoServe app. I'm going to take a few minutes to show you around. When you first come to the geoserve.sanborn.com site, you're presented with a login window. We're going to go ahead and log in with a demo user that I already have set up. And I will point out that if you forget your password, we have a link here that will email you a reset. We're going to go ahead and sign in, and that will take us to the project list view. Here I can see all of the projects that I currently have access to. In this case, we have a test project that has imagery from Kent County, Michigan. We have the ability to move to the map view, and this is honestly where most of your work is going to take place. We can see the start date and the status of the project, currently quality control, or QC. And we can see who the project manager is, and this is also a link to that project manager, so if you click on this, it will take you to a form that you can fill out and email the project manager directly. Let's take a look at the map. So if I click on map view, we're immediately taken to the imagery for the project. We have navigation buttons along the left-hand side, and along the right-hand side, we have buttons that are designed to help us input uh, issue pins. Um, we'll come back to these in a moment. Let's talk about navigation real quick. Similar to most map navigation, you can click and drag to pan around the map. You can use the buttons here to zoom in and zoom out. You can also use your scroll wheel to zoom in and zoom out. Below the zoom buttons, we have a full screen button. I'm not going to demonstrate this here in the video because this will make the screen much larger than the area I'm recording. But this allows the application to take over your entire monitor, and all you will see is this application. To get out of this, just hit the Escape key. Below this, we have three buttons for scales, 14800, 2400, and 1200 scale. This allows us to quickly zoom to these specific scales just by clicking on them. We'll give the map a moment to catch up here, and there you can see we've zoomed in to 1 1200th scale. This is a good time to bring up that we have a history function. If you right-click on the map, you can see a context menu that allows you to do things like add bookmark and zoom to extent, or to zoom to previous, which is what I want to do in this case. And it takes me right back to where I just came from. Below the quick zoom scales, we have a layer button. And the layer will allow us to change our base maps between street or satellite view and what overlays we're currently looking at, for example, seam lines or image indexes. I'm not going to go ahead and turn these on yet because they don't actually appear until we get closer in. We'll get to them in a moment. Let's go ahead and zoom in around the 2400 scale. And let's look at what it takes to actually insert a new issue. I'm not seeing anything that jumps out at me right here, but we're going to say there's an issue anyway. You'll notice that in the bottom left hand corner, the text for our scale has turned green, and our buttons are enabled. This means that we're zoomed in far enough that we're allowed to enter an issue for this photography at this point. We're going to go ahead and just simply drop a pin. So if I click on the pin button, You'll see that a sidebar is now available, allowing me to enter information about what I see is wrong with this image. And we have the ability to click on the pin and move it exactly where the issue is. So let's say that I have an issue here where these two roads meet. And then we'll come over and we'll choose what type of issue this is from the drop-down list. In this case, maybe I think there's a hard line between the tiles here. And we have to enter a description. This description is really used for you to tell Sanborn's technicians what you're seeing here, in case it's not obvious to them at first glance. So, let's go ahead and say, noticed a line between the roads. Please take a look. And then we can submit this issue. When we submit the issue, you'll notice that the pin turned red. That corresponds to the legend down here and says that this is an initial client QC concern. 
When a Sanborn employee takes a look at this, they will change the status over to Review in Progress, at which point in time the pin will turn yellow. Once the problem has been resolved, the pin will turn to either gray as closed and invalid or green as closed and corrected. Another way that we can enter issues is we can use a polygon. I'll go ahead and click here and we'll enter another issue. We simply click around the object that we're having or the area that we're having issues with and then click back on the first point to complete the polygon. Once the polygon has been completed, just like a pin, we get the exact same sidebar pop out, and we can choose what we want to say here. Maybe this is a problem with inconsistent radiometry. Um, hopefully we wouldn't have a hard seam line and inconsistent radiometry that close together, but it's a demo. So we're going to go ahead and make a comment in the description field. And the description field is required. If I try to enter something without giving a description, it's going to come up and tell me that it, I'm not allowed to do that. We really do need the data for our technicians to be able to look at. So in this case, let's go ahead and say, color is a little off here. And we'll submit this issue. And you'll notice that our polygon has changed to red corresponds exactly like the pins do. So what if I want to take a look at all of the issues? If we right click here and we zoom back out, say to the max extent, or sorry, zoom to the extent, we can see that we have a list of five issues. And maybe I want to see all of them at one time. That's what this list button over here on the right is for. If I click on this list, you'll notice that it brings up all of the pins that we have available to us. And as I scroll over them, please notice that the pins get highlighted here. So this is showing me where that issue lives. You can see who put in the issue. In this case, uh, I put in an issue when I was testing. Chris has put in a couple issues here. And the demo user has. So this would take us right back to the first issue that we entered. So let's go ahead and click on one of these, and we'll be taken directly to that issue. To close this list, we can use the close button, or with most of the buttons that pop open the sidebar, if we click the same button again, it'll go ahead and close the sidebar for us. We also have the ability to export the list of issues, along with all of the comments that have been made, and the ability to set bookmarks. If we'd like to set some place that we'd like to get back to later. For example, if I have to leave this project for a while and then come back, I might want to know where I left off. And you can do that by clicking here and then simply adding a new bookmark. So this is really the heart and soul of the GeoServe application. This allows you to mark anything that you see that's a little out of place and when you would like corrected. And on the opposite side, our technicians get an email that's generated immediately when the issue is put in place, and they'll be notified that there's something to take a look of, at. When they update the issue, either to put it into review in progress or they fix the problem and close the issue, you'll receive an email back so that you can come and take a look at the issue again and verify that things have been resolved to your satisfaction. So this has just been a quick overview of the GeoServe application. I hope it's helped, and thank you for your time.